Is digital branding the same as personal branding? How do both influence one's career? Well, while they aren't the same, they work in tandem. The former is built around a digital identity that we all create to drive and accomplish a specific goal or objective. It is intentional and it necessarily revolves around creating and sharing content, engaging on social media, forums and Q&A sites. It requires us to think of keywords to optimize our visibility. Personal branding is, however, built around our personality, being by definition more flexible and spontaneous. Both influence our identity, visibility and credibility online and offline, and in turn, our careers. Digital branding has become very notorious and the need to develop a strong one is almost unavoidable because of how influential digital technology has become in our lives. In today's episode, we want to revisit personal branding concepts and how they are linked to our evolution as professionals. We have with us Virginie Le, who has extensive experience in people's upskilling and coaching, and Christopher Rosa, who is specializing in new tech for people. Let's go there. Welcome to a new episode of Tech Talk. This is episode 10, season 5. Welcome, Carla. Welcome, Luis. How are you? I have eaten a lot, I think. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Because today we are celebrating the, well, COVID kind of <laughs> Christmas market. So it means a lot of limitations and less people, but it was cool, I think. Yes, it was nice. Though for pescatarian, what does it mean, pescatarian? People who only eat fish. No, and vegetarians. Well, I mean both. Uh, yes, but I you don't eat much, meat. But anyway, it's okay. <laughs> So uh, what's the topic of today, Carla? So today we are going to talk about digital perso personal branding to support your career. My career? Your Why career? not? Everyone's career. Our invitee's career. As well, of course. Okay. Today we are with Virginie Le. I always have problems, Virginie, to pronounce your last name, but I think it's right. All good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she's PwC Luxembourg's director, and she works for the advisory practice. And Christopher Rosa, who is an emerging tech strategist and a uh, senior as I don't know. Yes. Senior, senior associate, senior but senior. that really doesn't matter. We are not here for that hierarchies, but for expertise. <laughs> but I just wanted to introduce you officially. So welcome to Tech Talk. Thank you. Thanks for inviting us. Very, very nice. So I'll tell you quickly the story of this episode. One day I got a call from Christopher and he said, I love Tech Talk. I want to be there again. <laughs> <laughs> no. Almost, almost. <laughs> <laughs> now he said to me, I have some things to talk about because he works both work in, in the uh, you know, upskilling teams and, and workforce. And, and he said, well, imp how important is, you know, to have a sound digital presence when it comes to career and upskilling or any career move. And, and then is when everything started. Mm -hmm. So we shaped this and now we got the, the episode. So That's I right. would, without further delay, Carla, you can kick this off with the first question. Well, the first question is, how did this idea emerge? Why did you want to talk about it? So, so I, I can tell you a bit of the story before I actually called Louis. And it was, I mean, to me, it's, it's how a, a, any great story of office should start. I was drinking a beer after work with, <laughs> with some colleagues. <laughs> and uh, it was an after work dinner that we try to have every month, but that's not really the topic. And actually, Virginie was not there, but I got a message from her on, on LinkedIn. And she said, and I quote, it was in French, but still, she said, I love your title on LinkedIn. And to me, <laughs> <laughs> to me, it was nothing special. It's an emerging technology strategist uh, at PwC Luxembourg. But from there, we started chatting about, okay, uh, digital branding, what impact can you have and how understated it can be for some people. Because, for example, if you look simply at PwC or firms like, like ours, uh, you see that people would only put, okay, I'm a director, I'm a senior associate, a partner, manager, you name it. Uh, but that doesn't really tell you who they are, what they do, and what do they live for, what do they stand for, and what the, the impact they're trying to have on the world. Um, so that's, that's how we came up with the topic, really. We, we thought, okay, how, how, how can we push actually this so that people actually realize the impact it has? And that's when I told Louis, I love Tech Talk. I want to be, <laughs> <laughs> I wanna be in the game with Virginie. <laughs> voilà. So happy about that. Virginie, anything you want to add to this uh, honest answer? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, no, I think you said it all, Christo. Uh, I, I think the um, during the conversation, what we said, and I am having this conversation more and more, is about your why. You know, uh, I don't know who of you knows uh, Simon Sinek, the famous one. Oh, yes. And I always think, you know, everyone knows Simon Sinek. But no, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and with every post that I'll actually share from him on LinkedIn, I have more people asking me about the person. And I think that um, the, the title you can put on your LinkedIn account, for instance, also gives or should, in my opinion, give a, a, a hint on your why. That's, That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> Just a quick anecdote. So because of our work, we have close or direct relations with, with LinkedIn. LinkedIn Ireland in this case because the base is in Europe that, that's the country where they they are based in Europe and actually they recommend to have not necessarily exactly the title you get when you, where you work but actually a title that describes who you are and some keywords that can make you foundable mm -hmm. that's correct foundable <laughs> is yes, that a word I guess so, yeah. is that even a word <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry so yes that's a, well, well one, one recommendation kind of out of the blue <laughs> Because that's not the topic of today. But thanks, Virginie. I think it uh, makes a lot of, yeah, um, a lot of sense. Because, you know, when, when researching for this episode, I discovered that personal brand and digital brand aren't the same. And I didn't know that. I mean, I kind of knew, but I didn't know how to put that, in a, express that in a clear way. So none of us is really an expert in the field. But for you, according to you, uh, what, what is from a user's perspective, which is yours, uh, digital branding? What, what do we mean by that? Good question. Um, I think as well, I, I'm wondering if we should not say digital personal branding or something like that to, to, to have the two, um, the two concepts together. Absolutely, <laughs> so, it's more precise. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so... Um, I'm, I'm coming from a communications background um, uh, originally, so my studies long years ago. Um, and obviously branding is a concept or, or a word to me. And I always um, refer to the different facets, let's say. Uh, so branding for me is related to your identity, so who you are, who you want to be perceived by the others so mm -hmm. perception and how the others see you so the image exactly. and it's something in between at i would say the intersection <laughs> somehow um and i mean there's a lot of scientific literature also on the topic but um i i would say that branding is somewhere in between you know the overlap uh um, between those three ideas or concepts yes yes i i think what do you think I, I agree. So silent there. Yes, um, because I didn't get my coffee, so I'm <laughs> sleepy, Louise. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Me, so me, if me. I'm not very talkative, it's because of you. <laughs> okay, okay, I take that. Okay. It's my fault. <laughs> no, what I wanted to say actually is, um, yeah, I, I think digital. It, in a way, personal branding per se, it's more your personality. It's what you want to be, like you mentioned. But the digital one, because it's digital and it has a lot of variables such as being discoverable. Yeah, indeed, if, I forgot the digital exactly. aspect. Exactly. <laughs> it's response. kind of more strategic. You need to think more strategically and have a very specific objective because you cannot be discovered for everything. So it's, it's, that's the difference, no? I think. What do you think, Carla? And I think it's also easier to, the way you are perceived by others to, I don't want to say the word to trick, but it's easier to portray something that you're not really, or you would like to be. Okay. So the it's easier di on digital. Yeah, absolutely. And you see a lot of LinkedIn uh, on, on CVs that you wonder, is this right? Is this person has all this experience and she's so young or... Yeah, so, so I had one before saying Luigi professional dancer, but nobody <laughs> believed me. <laughs> you see? We do, we believe you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Christo. No, thanks a lot. Do, do you want to add something to the personal um, digital branding uh, answer, maybe from your perspective? 
No, I, I think I agree as well. There's all It's a mix and match of all of this, and it's so much more important today, specifically when we live in such a fast-paced environment, and, and you have, like, what, between half a second and 30 seconds that you give to someone to try and convince you when you look at them online. So mm. I think this aspect as well, with all this perspective of trying to keep honest, and I think at some point it, it's going to align what you're trying to show and who you truly are, specifically on, on this digital world. Uh, but yes, indeed, it's it's quite a quite a challenge. So two ki- two takeaways so far. I think one is trust. I mean, how important trust is in the digital and world. And we'll yeah. go back to that later. Yes, and the other one is content. We we also will revisit that. Yes, later on. But for now. But for now. <laughs> why is um, digital personal brand uh, branding a need a professional need in the twenty first century? Yeah, I, I think we, we can kind of touch the, 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 the this this answer mm. in the previous question. But in a way, I mean if I give you just two two quick examples, like uh, let's say people listening to the, this podcast today, they say, Oh, Virginie Lay, Lay or, or or Lewis, I really like what they do. And the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna pull out their phone, right? <laughs> Tap your name on Google and try to find out who you are. And as I was saying, they're gonna well, give you half a second to 30 seconds to try and convince you who is this person? Do I want to connect with them? Um, is, it imp- is it important for me to try and dig out what they're doing, uh, the posts that they have on the social media, etc.? cetera? Um, and, and again, in a world where it's so fast paced, etc., I think that that's really important. And for the professional aspect, um, I mean, today I work a lot also on, on innovation topics and stuff like this where you try and scout the market and see uh, all the solutions and how they work and what they do um, and what you find out is specifically in those smaller structures startups or etc the people tend to align a bit more the, the their personal branding specifically on LinkedIn or stuff like this with what they sell and what they do in their businesses and and to me um, it clicks even way more when you see that all of these two align with the purpose and what they are trying to bring to the world so Professionally, I think it has a huge impact. And as much as a crisp and clear value proposition can be to a business, I think having your own at least defined and to realize that you have this personal brand um, is, is clearly very important today. I think you nailed it. Yes. Yeah. Now, Virginie, can I ask you something? The next one. I don't know. Ask. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so... What we are saying is, okay, personal branding and digital branding supports your career. But I want to take a step backwards and ask you, because I know you have worked on upskilling. Yes. For pretty good time. So <laughs> a, a, a bit. A bit. So, <laughs> so just to remind everyone, what is upskilling and why we are hearing more and more of this thing everywhere? I mean, it's like, you know, everywhere, upskilling and rare skilling and all the killing, not the killing, no. Skilling, <laughs> but not killing. <laughs> so j- just, uh, you know. <laughs> I would say maybe maybe that could be a good, uh, you know, uh, skilling to avoid killing. Uh, <laughs> maybe one one answer to the question, but uh, um, more, more seriously, I think we hear more and more um, indeed on the topic of um of skills and competence development. Um, and I do see two reasons for that. One is, um, let's say more, that I would say maybe more transactional. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, there's a lot of disruption out there on the labor market. Um, technology is, is the most known, but if I guess if you're working in um, the banking sector, you would say compliance is disrupting yeah, us. Um, if if you would work in the utilities industry, you would say, God, green is killing us <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, if we don't do anything about it. So I think it's about um, it's all about making sure that you have the right skills to deliver on your business objectives. Um, so meaning having the right, we often say that the, the right person on the right job with the right skills at the right time, so to say. <laughs> Um, uh, so, so that is one explanation for me. I think the second one, and maybe this is more my um, the idealist in me, <laughs> is that beyond technology, climate change, and other big topics, I think the human mm-hmm. will be the topic of the next decade, and I hope for more than a decade, um, because humans will make a difference, uh, which is why you should also focus on what humans can bring you. <laughs> in your business uh, mm-hmm. and thus also investing 
in that human capital, as we name it. Are you it. in a subtle way suggesting that the robots are coming? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but, you know, there's, um, we're talking a lot about, and, and I mean, that's a fear, you know, yeah, robots will take our, our jobs, etc. But um, I, I think what we will see in the coming decades and what is starting to come in the U.S. since spring last year with this uh, concept of the big quit or great resignation, yeah, exactly. where many people are leaving their jobs without having actually a follow up job, uh, without even having a plan but just mm. because they don't want to accept any more working conditions or because they just realized with the pandemic, hey, what is my why? <laughs> if we come back to the <laughs> first uh, question. Um, I, I think it will just rebalance the power relationship between the employer and the employee. And we will be in a win-win situation for all if all understand that you don't have any more career for 25 years in the same job, mm -hmm. doing the same, absolutely the same thing in yeah. the same way. <laughs> um, but you have to reinvent yourself most probably every three, five, ten years. And for that, you need the skills. Um, and, and I think this is a bit my no, thinking. Very, very interesting. <laughs> it is. You know, the other day I read the title of the article was with everybody talks about the great resignation mm -hmm. but nobody talks about the great realis reali realization <laughs> because you mentioned uh, everybody's quit not everybody but a lot of people are quitting but they don't know what to do afterwards yeah. mm -hmm. they realize that hey i have no plan <laughs> and now what should i do so that's very good very good point now Carla, you you gonna touch the next one? Of course, I can. Go ahead. <laughs> so now that we tackle upskilling, uh, what is the connection between personal branding and upskilling? How does uh, the former influence the latter, or vice versa? I don't know. Um, to, to me, and it uh, connects a bit with what Virginie was saying. There's a lot of it uh, which which fits in two words. For me, it's it's a lot about about self awareness, right? Because the moment you're trying to build your personal branding, the first thing I would say you need to do is try and stop for a bit, take a step back, realize, okay, who, who am I? Uh, is it aligned with what I want to be? Uh, who am I online? Who am I also as a brand? Um, and with this first step, then you you realize okay, that's the skills I have. That's probably where I want to be. Is it, am I going in that direction? And from there, you can understand maybe the, the skills gap that you have. So maybe the skills that you need to develop. And, and, and I, I guess we'll get to that. But then the, the person that you need to, to have around you in your network, in your daily life, in your, your colleagues, etc. the person you need to connect with in order to learn these skills and to go into that direction of, of where you want to be and what you want also the people to recognize you for mm -hmm. and, and to connect with you. I think for me, that would be the connection between the two. I would say so as well. Yeah. Agree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, too. I agree. I agree too. Especially now that everything is overcrowded. I mean, it's so overcrowded mm -hmm. that in a way, if you are not branded somehow, you are nothing. It's so such a sad word. Oh, you are nothing. That was rough. Quite a, quite a pessimistic view. Yes. <laughs> yes. But that's, isn't it? It's It's... It's, it's a pessimistic view, but I, but I would say that it's more sadness, you know, because mm -hmm. to come back to what we were discussing before, I mean, if you don't, if you're not on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. you do not exist, you know, so. It's true. It, it, and there are plenty of professions or industries <laughs> that are not represented Absolutely. on LinkedIn. Mm. Um, and, and that's maybe one of the challenges because it's a bit, you know, we have that much of information. I mean, you go out there <laughs> on the Internet and you can find there's so much information. But what is not in there is kind of not existing. <laughs> Has it happened exactly. to you that when you meet someone and you say, hey, let's connect on LinkedIn and the person tells you, I don't have LinkedIn. You just open your eyes like this big. Say, <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Where are you living? <laughs> yeah. But I, as, um, I can only illustrate with an anecdote. Uh, two or, th or th maybe three years ago now, um, I was, uh, I, we were the whole team delivering an upskilling program 
Um, and one of the steps in, in supporting the employees in this upskilling program was actually a personal branding session. Mm. So to help people, you know, also get awareness on, on their identity and also on, on how, you know, they could benefit from social work networks, among others. And a, a traditional company, state-owned, um, I had 15 people. I guess, uh, on, on the session. And no one had a LinkedIn account. Um, no. And, and that no. was surprising for me <laughs> because as we were saying before, um, and, and especially you, Christo, I think one of the, maybe it's a side benefit, but it's a real, for me, big benefit is that when you're on social networks, there are other people out there not mm -hmm. only you. So it means that you nourish also your knowledge, what, you know, your curiosity, etc., mm -hmm. through the people you follow, the people you're connected exactly. with, etc. So if you're not at all in that space, you also lose all the benefit of enriching yourself yeah. through others. And I was, yeah, I was surprised. Um, but it's, it's not an exception. Yeah. No, that's a pretty interesting anecdote no one that that it's uh, i'm shocked <laughs> mm. i'm shocked now you mentioned several times social media or notably linkedin there are of course other other networks out there uh but overall i think s social media does has influenced really a lot in this personal or digital branding thing do you think before social let's th let's think of 2000 I don't think the digital part of branding was a thing. No. Do you can you recall those times? I mean, we are still young. I know we weren't even <laughs> born. At that of, point. of course, I do not. Uh, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I agree. I think you know the um, the famous elevator pitch exercise mm. existed yes. already fifty years ago. You know? <laughs> so whoever would have um, applied for a job and have a, an interview would do, you know, Brent, even though, I mean, even on a party, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you would do also personal or self-branding, uh, so just to be liked by the others or to find, you know, the person of your life. Um, so, so I think it has always existed. Um, but I guess also that practices that we see on the media, you know, all that stuff of, uh, I don't know, uh, now, I don't know the names uh, in English, but all you know, those uh, TV shows where um, people get celebrities. Uh, oh, talk show. Click. talk show. Not even talk. I mean, talk show is the the grandmother of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you mean of reality concepts, shows. You know, but, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yes, that reality was. show. I'm yeah. sorry. sorry yes. <laughs> yeah, all re yeah, TV reality shows, you know, just really personify somehow if mm -hmm. we can say it like this and I think so this has grown over time and then it's just exponentially yeah. now um, given with the social media yeah I think so I think so I think it has made the thing even more necessary and uh, yeah and I think COVID and it's even, very powerful. Even accelerated this even more because mm -hmm. COVID was like this super uh, booster for this story yeah I don't want to steal more of, and, and now I give you the room. See how cool I am? You are. Very Thank cool. you. <laughs> so um, let's talk about organizations. And um, if they are encouraging employees to build their personal brand and take advantage of it to upskill, is it a reality? But you were with them. You may, you may f have the feeling of how, what they are doing. Yes. I, I think I don't, don't want to give a pessimistic answer, uh, but I think, in my opinion, I would say not enough um, for a couple of reasons. I, I'm, I can give like a, a good example of that, but a couple of years ago, uh, not as long as probably you, but I was, I was still at university. 
Thank you. That was that was <laughs> st- that was stubborn. mean. This guy that is mean. stubborn. That was mean. That was mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm staying in, in, in the flow now, but uh, yeah, and, and I would see I would see some teachers like specifically marketing teachers who, who would try and push this, who would try and uh, give this this skill about personal branding to to uh, to us to the students, and I think that was good. But I thought that this was quite the exception, right? I think this is not enough. Um, and now that I joined, I mean for for quite some time, but I joined PwC and, and I see here, um, I think some people push it, uh, some like the people that have, I think, a strong personal brand or that realize the impact it can have, they try to push it also around them. And that links back to what we were saying, that if you connect with this, this type of people, you can improve it in, in your life as well. Um, but you, you would also see some companies and specifically in, in, in workforce uh, and not planning, but in hiring and all of, of these fields uh, that would let the employees and the future employees as well be involved in, in writing the, the job descriptions with them. And for me, that that's a quite a good way to I mean, not not foster, but yeah, foster in a way the, the personal branding and so that the people realize that, okay, they can actually have an impact. They can take uh, this job description and fine tune it to who they are and realize actually who they want to become and the skills gap that they have with the company. And I think with that, with defining your, your role, defining probably your title as well, uh, you can more uh, easily, I would say, define who you are and the personal brand that you want to build around this. Um, so I think some companies, to get back to the question, some companies, some organizations are doing it, uh, but I think it, it's not enough and should be pushed. I'm not saying it's an easy one to push or to help people get into, um, but I think it's quite a, quite an important one. Because there, there will be resistance too anyway. It's like any change you, mm. you, you, know, you want to go. It's also time consuming now especially in the beginning when you're set up oh yes whole. it is yeah. yes but i have one politically incorrect question <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> is our company doing enough and that th- whatever you say will go kind of uh, towards us towards us because <laughs> we are working on it and it's and it's we mo- do our best exactly so it's it's more <laughs> it's a constructive critique where we want to he- we love to hear um, I'll let you answer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that is when experience comes. I think you, yeah. <laughs> I think I think you always know. need to look at the two sides of the coin. I think PwC is a company that is very brand aware. So in that sense, at least there is something done. <laughs> oh, yes. I have worked in other companies and institutions, and I can tell you, uh, you, you appreciate it when it's there. Mm-hmm. That's the first point. Um, Are we doing enough with PwC? I think I would say no. Um, Why? Because I think that there's there's a lot, or at least I see a lot of efforts towards people that have more visibility. So I would say a high part of the pyramid. Um, But actually the people that have more influence or is is the lower part of the pyramid <laughs> and and <laughs> okay we have point. a lot more than the high part of the pyramid in the, <laughs> in in the company but i think that we could we we could have uh, so much higher impact targeting this yes. part of the population let's S- say such a good point that was a, i would call it democratization of the <laughs> practice <laughs> 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 For example, because also I think that the, the, um, it's not to, to go back to old versus uh, <laughs> young, but um, uh, still, if we just take the anecdote, <laughs> I would say that um, th- there is more, how can I phrase it, politically correct in responding. <laughs> that there's more chances that um, more junior people would be much more active um, and we're talking a lot about LinkedIn um, as, I mean, as the professional network, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, especially if we think of the, the English speaking um, space. Um, but today, how do we attract also as PwC, as an employer? Um, those people may not be on LinkedIn, but on Insta and whatever TikTok. else. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. Um, and I think there... Um, yeah, I'm not sure that we're doing a lot, mm-hmm. or at least uh, that we are doing enough uh, in that space also for 
the people to identify with PwC and also PwC to leverage on employer branding. No, th uh, thank you. Because this is recorded, then we will... <laughs> work by more than you said no thank you i think you have a point i, I think we're also aware of it it's just uh, sometimes you know time and resources and of course mm. but yeah it's a of very course. good point it's thank already you. good to educate the higher part <laughs> of the pyramid <laughs> thank you that's true shall i say let's jump yes i think no it's more it's no more? it's okay. yours i'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> it's okay so we we're talking about Oh, you have been mentioning the importance of being in contact with people, which recalls the word networking. Okay. Um, how, I I how important it is for someone who is looking to upskill him or herself? Do you think in digital networking it really influences any upskilling process? Or it's, it's a bit tangential and a kind of uh, far-fetched? To, to me, is tremendously important uh, because the, and there's a saying that that states that you're the the average of the five people that you get in touch the most on your on your daily on a daily basis. And there's a twist to that that says that you're actually not because you're way more than that. You're just not this five close person that you have. You're the persons that are behind them because they influence them, and through that they influence you. Um, and I think that if you build your your network well and specifically on the social media linkedin twitter you name it uh, you get access to all these contents um, mm -hmm. i mean and, and you can upskill through them you get access to to podcasts to uh, to, to articles <laughs> <Like TikTok>. yes <laughs> <laughs> to to articles from virginie to people like that, that that share interesting contents and i think that's that's quite a huge step to upskilling because to me um and I don't know if people share that, that, that aspect, but to me, upskilling is not only about taking one training per year about something or personal branding or, or, or whatever. It's also all these, these things that you learn on a daily basis mm -hmm. that you share with your colleague, with your network, the article, the podcast, and finding the time, uh, making the time to, to actually upskilling yourself. And, and a lot of it come, comes through your net, to, the, to the network, to the people. I, I like to call it self-micro-upskilling. Yeah. <laughs> trademark <skin>. Luigi <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that's my trademark no but it's absolutely yeah. true also I think if you want to move you know change let's say field so improve it yeah get super data savvy for instance yeah. um, you know being around people who actually do it it's very helpful so yeah I think uh, well, that's my take on I don't know what you think Carla you have to I mean coffee is really an yes <laughs> it is <laughs> <laughs> Especially today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, then I give you the next one. And so you wake up. Thank you. Okay. So uh, based on your uh, experience, how did you build your network or how are you building it? And uh, something that we talked about before, trust. How do you trust it? Because you mentioned something very important, Christopher, which is you, you get information for, mm -hmm. from all over the place. But how do you know that this is the right, the accurate source uh, or kind of information that you can trust? Um, it, it's a good question. I have, there, there is an anecdote coming to my mind on this one. Um, also, I would, you know, traditionally I would say, okay, I built my network through life. <laughs> uh, and um, and and you know the successive experiences, so work experience, etc. Um, and basically, then the people you work with, uh, I would say, especially in Luxembourg, small country, you know, you will <laughs> find them back again yes. uh, at some point. Being your employer, your client, your friend, your whatever. <laughs> um, so, so this is how traditionally, you know, I would say, but. Um, I need to. I, need, I, I just need to tell you a story. So a few years back, um, looking at also deepening expertise in terms of strategic communication. So it's um, actually not a few years, but some years back. <laughs> um, so I was following um, a Canadian or Australian influence on LinkedIn uh, that was publishing a lot around communications and change communications. And then one day she posted something on a master degree, yet it's in Ottawa, so it was in, in Canada. And I reacted, you know, saying that at last, you know, there's someone focusing on change communications and not, you know, communications in the sense of marketing, et cetera, and more traditional, what we, what we saw at, back at that time. 
And there was one person uh, who reacted to that. I was not mm -hmm. linked to that person. Um, the guy is an American um, that was in the Netherlands back at that time, now in Iceland. <laughs> uh, a communication strategist title on LinkedIn. And the guy <laughs> asked, you know, to connect. And two months later, he invited me to a, um, a an experience in Brussels mm -hmm. um, to uh, experiment actually new forms of um, uh, of events. So it was an open forum back at that open innovation forum, I think. So, okay. uh, so you know, now we we know the fishbowl and all of those methods, etc. And I thought, okay, either. The guy is bullshitting me. I will go to Brussels and I'll need to buy something or I don't know what. Um, or maybe it's very interesting and I just go. Um, so I did go um, based on curiosity and trust saying, okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he seems to be serious. What he's posting on LinkedIn makes really sense to me. Um, so I was one day in Brussels <laughs> on experimenting, you know, this new way of collaborating. It was great. I met 40 people who are all LinkedIn contacts by now <laughs> in, in so many various industries, food industry, people on governments in Brussels, so European institutions, etc. Um, and I learned so much through that. I have a network. I, my network grew and it was just by trusting uh, and being open you know to, to other learn. people yeah. I had nothing to buy so just to say. <laughs> um, and and we're still in contact today and sharing contents on a regular basis I, I think when it comes to trust there is no formula really it's more it's mm -hmm. it's it's the mm -hmm. feeling is is your gut feeling it, it's also you know I wouldn't say stock uh, Stalking is the word, the person, but kind of knowing what the path, the career path of the person is, can kind of research a little bit on the person. You also have to do some work, mm. I think. Right? Mm. Yes. Think so it's, but I think it's stalking is a word, it's a verb. I'm to stalk, stalk someone. Yeah, to stalk yeah. someone. To stalk, but it's not what I mean. I mean <laughs> <laughs> research, to do no, some don't research. Do yeah, yeah, research. Ba background yes. check. <laughs> Although we have stalked someone at some point in our lives, and who have, hasn't done that, and throw the first uh, stone. stone. <laughs> uh, silence in the room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so let's move to content because, um, okay, coming back to social media, the social media thing. Uh, you mentioned already, you know, several times, and I think it's absolutely true how much social media and, and content share on social media influences a person. You learn, you micro learn. Or, 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 yeah, uh, or upskill even yourself. Now, what to share? <laughs> what, do you, what do you do when you share? Because, um, what do you do, Carla, when you share? Actually, you sh do you share? Not much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm asking. <laughs> I know you don't huh? share, but is there any reason why you don't share? Well, because I am the social media specialist. And at the end of the day, I don't want to be on social media anymore. <laughs> that's a very good point. Okay, that's, a, that's fair. That's fair, that's fair okay. right? But in no, but I do share sometimes. Yes, you share but sometimes. But only when I really have something to say. I yeah. don't want to post something just to post and be present. I want to share something where I can add a little okay. story yeah. or cool. my opinion. So that's more my, okay. my strategy. So tip number one, you don't, sh don't share for the sake of sharing, mm -hmm. but share mm -hmm. when it makes sense. In your case, uh, any tip? Or how do you curate the content? That's the word, content curation. <laughs> For, for me, for me, it's it's also quite difficult. I don't share that much, uh, but the steps I, I try and take to to get to sharing because there's some stuff that I want to share um, is first again try to to build build this network and build the things that I want to learn based on what I want to be and and what I actually want to learn. Uh, try to build this content around around all of this. I write stuff for myself. Just I, I try and write content just for myself. I keep it to myself. At some point, I mean, you need to take the step and to share it when you think it's relevant <laughs> and you. Find Find, uh, find interesting topics to talk about, but um, I, w when I share, I try to base on base it on on podcasts I listen to and stuff related to to 
something I've read or, or what I do in my daily work, whether it's it's matching, it's AI uh, stuff around all of this. And I try to build the content first to myself. And when I, I see a spot where it can be interesting and people might might want to react on this on, on my on social media, for example, that's when I get to to sharing. Mm -hmm. And I know Virginie is probably more of an expert because she sh shares more than I do. <laughs> I'm not an expert, just um, <laughs> more <laughs> of an, more of an. <laughs> yeah. um, I'd say for for me, there are several reasons to share. Um, there can be a reason that I just want to get information across. So last example, um, we are recruiting in our team and I want the network to know. <laughs> I, saw <laughs> that that I saw that one. I saw that one. I remember that one. Yes. Um, and, and then the, the, um, there would be two other reasons. M mainly, I would say it's to actually really share. So there's something... I have seen that it is, that is inspiring or that um, I think can make impact or that learned me actually so, or that taught me something and that I want the world to know or that <laughs> I think can be interesting for people in my network. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say last but not least is also just to um, maybe sometimes be provocative. Mm -hmm. And to see, you know, what would be reactions or what do others uh, think of, um, of, you know, what yeah. I have an opinion. I don't share it, but I, I share the content just to know what, what is there out, yeah. uh, what is out there, sorry, and what would be reactions. And do you get uh, a lot of reactions? Um, not as much or as many <laughs> as I would like to. Um, I, I've seen and I think we talked about it already, Louis, once. Um, the fact that when you share something that is easy to digest, uh, a picture. So there's um, Leadership First, I think, an account that is sharing a lot these days. Or, or maybe it's just because I'm following them since not that long. <laughs> But sharing, you know, this... These bright sentences, you know, that everyone can agree to. You know? So yeah. uh, uh, respect people. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, who would not like to respect people? Um, so this you can get a lot of reactions to. And sometimes I think, yeah. um, uh, but I've learned as well with experience that when you share more lengthy content, mm -hmm. um, well, you wouldn't get any reactions pe because people wouldn't take the time to actually read, um, but be in the more micro, what was the branding, micro, uh, okay. <laughs> micro, micro self micro, se micro self upskilling. Yeah, so, <laughs> so related concept, you know, micro con consumption of yeah. information and not, you know, really taking the time and going deeper into thinking and actually building your own opinion. But I think that you said something that is key is that when, of course, that you share also because um, it's good for your personal brand, but you're also sharing for the network and you think about what this might be interesting for the other people out there. It's just, it's true that there's so much information that not everyone yeah. can Absolutely. keep up. Uh, what Virginie was referring, I think it's called, it comes from the word snack and it's snackable content. It's something yeah. you can, it's like, you know, having a finger food. <laughs> Now, it's also true that Based on, on my experience, and also, you know, I give training on this, you and need to find too. a balance. And, and Carlos, well, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> is you need to find a balance between the, the things that are snackable and things that are, that go deeper into, into, into what you are in your field, and especially if you are upskilling yourself. The other thing that comes to my mind is coherence. I see people sharing everything about the entire world's topics. Mm -hmm. And because of the noise we mentioned, you know, because digital branding needs a focus, then you need to find your keywords and go around them. Sometimes you can go off, <laughs> off the script, but not It's all the time. And some people are just... I think you can also mix personal and professional. And sometimes the personal posts, I see, I mean, you have they, a good example, they Louise. They wonders, yes. yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, what's personal when we... When I, referred to, to my daughter and, and, you know, it was a very touching moment for me. She was writing her first essays and essays and for me it was so emotional. <laughs> I was so emotionally driven by that because now I am proofreading her and, you know, I feel still young. <laughs> 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 and when I was doing that, I said, oh my God, time, time, time goes by. 
Oh my God, now I recall Madonna. So Time quickly. goes by, <laughs> so slowly. No, <laughs> slowly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not related to this. <laughs> so we are almost there. And yes. I don't know if you have any other question, Carl. I think we addressed all. We also uh, mix them well, all, but... It, not me, but Ralph, who is behind... I don't know if he wants to ask his question because this might be Ralph's last podcast, sadly. Oh, oh my, oh yes, that's oh. true. Okay, Ralph cannot join Okay. Us. Well, was, um, what was the most uh, embarrassing thing? Was it embarrassing? It oh, was. what is the most... Counterproductive. <laughs> counterproductive <laughs> thing you've seen on social media, I mean, that could damage someone's career or that... Did well, damage. <laughs> yeah, <because laughs> we, spoke Thanks, about, we spoke about it offline. Yes. Um, so I, I was saying I have the best story ever about that. Happened to me uh, less than a week ago on LinkedIn, a uh, famous one, <laughs> where um, a person of my network, a salesperson, uh, shared a, um, a visual uh, on two salespeople obviously talking together and... Um, uh, criticizing them, their clients, you know, saying, "Hey, guy, did you also did you get your offer out? Of course, I did. You know, fifteen days ago because it was so urgent, and still the client didn't come back to me uh, yet. Wow. And obviously, they don't have the budget, they don't have the time, they don't have the skills. Um, and yeah, I was, I was first. I was, you know, surprised. So I was just okay. Is that, you know, is is that irony? Maybe." Um, <laughs> But there was no message. It was just a pure reshare. And I oh. thought, well, wow. this I think I wouldn't wow. do. <laughs> yes. that's, that's, that's what we call either career suicide, <laughs> or it's absolutely fed up with the world, what, what he or she does, that, you know, that, that's the, mo the inflection point when the person will come change absolutely what, what it's doing. I don't know. So that's another important tip. Be careful with what you share because it's going to be there forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I don't even really know if it's, you know, what you're sharing on Snapchat really disappear or is somewhere in a data center somewhere in the world. Uh, well, of course well, it's in a yes. data center. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Or clubhouses. Yeah. Even when you delete posts, you don't really, I mean, you delete, but they yeah. are somewhere. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks a lot, Virginie. Thanks a lot, Christopher. I think it was a very, very wonderful and warming conversation, even if the weather is a bit cold. It has been very cool lately, I think. So thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, so how are we spending Christmas, by the way? Skiing. I'll be skiing. Skiing. If Corona allows If, if yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, yes. Is La Donna Corona. Ah, wow. That sounds very good. La Donna <laughs> Corona. <laughs> And Virginie, you stay around? Yeah, I think I'll be on LinkedIn learning or something. <laughs> 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 no, no, joke, no, joke, joke. Please. No, 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 joke. I'll be, uh, I, I think I'll be mostly offline. <laughs> that's very good. That, that's a very good one. I know Carla will go yeah, back home to Portugal. Yes. If Donna Corona allows <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that's and, a very uh, good point. Yes, I will be here and just traveling around. So this is Tech Talk, technology made simple. Over a cup of coffee. Thanks a lot. Ciao, until the next episode. And that's all for today. This is Tech Talk, technology made simple over a cup of coffee or van show, blue wine, whatever. 